everyone, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number 10. Woohoo! This is Yukai Chow, gamification pioneer and top 5 gamification guru. Today we're going to talk about the third core drive of Octalysis, which is empowerment of creativity and feedback. That is one of the most amazing white hat gamification techniques out there! People are naturally creative beings and giving them the process to utilize their creativity to create, to imagine, and to invent makes people happy. Empowerment of creativity and feedback is when people can utilize their creativity, come up with interesting combinations, come up with their own ideas, and more importantly they need to see feedback. They need to see if it's actually working and people are willing to do a lot of stuff to test their creativity. So not many of you know this but I'm actually a uh, chess coach and uh, chess is a great example of empowerment of creativity and feedback because in chess you all start with the same pieces, you always start with the same setup. But there are all these traps, endgame positions, Sicilian defense, English opening, Alakine defense, the Benko Gambit, all of that awesome stuff that you have to remember and utilize and figure out a strategy that actually allows you to win, allows you to beat your opponent, and you have full control over everything you want to your mind's imagination. And yeah, and based on that, you either win or lose. Same thing in the game of StarCraft, right? Pretty much exactly like chess, but in real time, you gotta move faster, gotta really watch your uh, APMs, actions per minute, and uh, you know, you got three different races instead of like the same set of uh, set of pieces. But you know, it's, it's a great game, and again, it allows people to express their creativity and feedback. And so, can four carriers actually break up here? Storm's going down on top of the Marines. Good control there so far by the little one, keeping the majority of his Marines alive. Unfortunately, they're forced to kind of stay in the back for the majority of that. One more storm could wipe out this army, though. Is it going to be enough? They're trying to focus down the mothership! Oh, he actually gets it with a group of hero Marines. They're actually able to kill a mothership and almost going to get a carrier! He did get the carrier as well. Talk about hero Marines, man. Join the Marines, they said. Kill motherships, they said. Another example is Minecraft. Minecraft gives people basic elements and basic graphics but allows them to express their creativity and build a world of their own. And even being a basic game, it generated millions and millions of sales uh, from this simple game and tons of viral videos and avid fans um, that love Minecraft. Games like that are engaging because it allows you to create your own world, your own reality, and even your own looks. One of the most appealing things about the virtual world Second Life is that you're able to customize everything in it. You're able to customize how you look. If you're a guy or a girl, you're able to customize different tools. You're, you're able to build your own buildings. And because it allows people to do anything that they can imagine, that's what engages people in Second Life, and as lo and you know, once they poured in enough of that customization, then now people feel a, a sense of ownership and possession, right? Which is obviously core drive number four. If you've been studying Octalis as well enough, doing your homework, it's always good. I have to tell you something right now. The freedom of doing a live radio show just empowers me to basically do whatever I want find the solution, find the problem, find the people I'm supposed to be talking to, and just launch off into the ether. But you end up with a process. I call it the flow. It's just like Kobe Bryant. It's like Black Mamba. You know, you're just in the flow. It's like Michael Jordan. You're just in the flow. But you have to be free to do it. And that's all I'm talking about right there. Mm. And that is the true essence of gamification. Woo! Empowerment of creativity and feedback is the core drive that a lot of academics out there endorse when they say gamification is not really good game design because you know all you see are um, badges and points. For instance, uh, Sebastian Duterte, when he talks about gamification design or 
you know, gameful design, as he likes to call it. Um, I'm just waiting at for an old lady to cross the street right now. But um, he would often say, hey, look, these are all the quote-unquote gamification examples, but those aren't that fun with the badges and points. And, he, and then he'll say, look at these real games. You can utilize creativity. You can play chess. You can play Go. You can figure things out. You have a track of mastery. And that goes the same for Jay McGonagall. So when people like, like us, Sebastian Turding and Jay McGonagall to talk about how gamification is not really useful, they're usually saying, hey, we would like to see more empowerment, creativity, and feedback inside of the system. Obviously, they could jump at my face and say, hey, you're wrong. Stop shoving things in my mouth. You know nothing. You're ignorant, you kai. Which is possible. Um, but just from the examples I've seen that they say, hey, this is good gameful design. Um, it usually seems to be a mash between empowerment of creativity and feedback as well as uh, epic meaning and calling. So it just seemed like epic meaning and calling where they talk about examples where you have a game like Attitude where it's you're inspired and they also you're allowed, you're, you can overcome challenges, right? And utilize creative thinking and, uh, and beat a game. Like what I say all the time, you gotta utilize all eight core drives and you know, as much as you can. And they all serve a purpose. They all have, they all do something for you, not everything. And uh, some are more easier to design than others. In the videos of me talking, had things behind me on the bookshelf. And every video, things would change. And I told people there's a secret message behind me in the bookshelf. And people went crazy trying to figure out what it was. They came up with all kinds of unbelievable creative ideas about what was going on. It made people feel like the course itself was more fun um, and increased the, the learning and the activity that happened. So that's my example. Excellent. Master the empowerment of creativity and feedback to get your users to love your product forever. Now I remember when I was playing the game Diablo 3. Uh, part what Diablo 3 did really really well is allow you to change all your combos, your skill sets, and your and your gear together to create a, a synchronized strategy. A strategy that um, allows you to really optimize for each of your characters and your gear. Whether it be life leaking, whether it be uh, becoming a tank or a super powerful damage per second, DPS. You know, it just becomes fun to, to try and test. Cool bi to group bicycle on the Google campus. Uh, Plants vs Zombies is a very good problem solving game and it's like any other tower defense game where, where the player has a set of problems to solve in order to prevent monsters from catching and they have limited resources, they have a a selection of plants they can utilize and they use their creativity and problem solving skills to organize the best defense against the zombies and because there's so many different ways to solve this one problem it becomes very engaging and motivating for everyone to try their own solutions and see how it works out. It's fun because it empowers your creativity and you see immediate feedback. When it comes to empowerment of creativity and feedback few things are very important. One thing to take note of is that empowerment of creativity and feedback is one of the hardest core drives, core drives to implement into a product. And the reason is because it actually involves people into a game. The other stuff can be very, you know, implicit, can be very in the background. Just the progress bar going up, whoop, and then you know, you're doing your stuff and the leaderboard goes up, you know, all that is good. Or just like, hey, you, you won a lottery, you're pulling a bar. But empowerment of creativity and feedback. This is like poker. It requires you to think. It requires to, to really jump in and be involved. So where does that creativity come from? And that's where genius innovation has to come in place. If you can make purchasing a game where you actually have to solve problems, where you have to use your creativity, and you can see feedback, obviously, then you'll have a very engaging app. It's just some, a lot of people, you always risk people uh, seeing this and feel like, hey, that's too much commitment. I don't, I don't really want to uh, jump into this problem solving game or using my creativity or figuring things out. A lot of people don't want to, don't like to think, right? So, so um, it's not always um, easy. I'd say this is the, probably the hardest core drive to implement in most products. Clever, clever. 
It takes some effort to save, but eventually the money does all the work. Obviously, any type of crowdsourced campaigns are a great example of empowerment and cre of creativity and feedback. Um, you're just getting a group of people to solve problems and see who can win first, right? It's very simple, straightforward, and uh, it's fun, like a fun guy. Give Cupid a hand. Hmm. Sexy Valentine's Day gift to make you quiver. Ha ha ha. Very clever, quiver. And that concludes the beginner's guide to game evocation, episode number 10.